first on CNN, a new witness for the January 6th committee. CNN has learned that former Trump National Security Council official Matthew Pottinger will testify publicly at the next committee hearing in prime time on Thursday. Pottinger resigned in the immediate aftermath of the January 6th attack on the Capitol. He will appear alongside former Trump White House aide Sarah Matthews. Let's go first this morning to CNN's senior crime and justice reporter, Caitlin Polance. Caitlin, thank you so much for joining us. And of course, let's start with Matthew Pottinger and these details, because obviously he was a pretty critical figure in the West Wing. He may not be this household name, but he is certainly someone who had quite a bit of influence inside the West Wing. That's right. So Pottinger was the deputy national security advisor. That's a really high ranking position. He is going to be alongside uh, another person who was pretty high up in the White House, the former White House deputy press secretary, Sarah Matthews. They're go both going to be live witnesses that we have been able to confirm for Thursday's primetime hearing. And as you guys mentioned, um, it's very notable. Both of these people resigned in the immediate aftermath of January 6th. So they're not likely to be uh, very friendly witnesses to Donald Trump or what happened there on January 6th. They are likely to be able to, they won't be mincing words, we don't expect, whenever they're testifying. But we do know from the committee members who've been previewing this hearing over the weekend in recent days that they want to take us inside the White House, minute by minute, 187 minutes in total where Donald Trump was doing nothing. They are going to hope to illustrate that, not just with these live witnesses, but with witnesses that they have videotaped. We've been seeing all of these depositions. There are lots of people that were in the White House that day that have sat for testimony. So all of that is going to come together in this primetime hearing. And, you know, I was in court yesterday for Bannon, uh, Bannon's trial jury selection, and I was shocked to see how many potential jurors had really watched closely to Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony, knew her name. She, too, was not uh, a household name before she testified. So we're going to see if the committee can recreate um, that sort of impact that they had with Hutchinson with this hearing on Thursday. With us now, Daniel Goldman. He served as lead majority counsel in the first impeachment inquiry against Donald Trump and as lead counsel to House managers. Uh, he is also running for Congress in the Democratic primary for New York's 10th Congressional District. Daniel, thank you so much for being with us. Matthew Pottinger, Sarah Matthews. These are staffers who were known within the halls of the West Wing, but not maybe to the rest of the country. What role will they play, do you think, Thursday night? Well, I think it's very interesting that we're now at the eighth hearing, and we've seen excerpts from so many depositions, but not from these two. It is clear that the committee has been saving these two witnesses for the last hearing, which is going to dive into Trump's dereliction of duty on the day of January 6th, when he did nothing to stop the rioters, even though he was being requested from all angles, his own team, the Mike Pence, uh, Congress, the Republican congresspersons. So we are going to understand uh, in great detail through these two witnesses what Trump was doing that day. Um, and also, John, as you'll remember, there's a, a suspicious gap in White House records as to what calls were coming in and out for Donald Trump for about six hours that conveniently overlapped with the riot. So I, I suspect we are going to learn more from these two witnesses about who Trump was speaking to and what he was doing that day. And Sarah Matthews, Daniel, was a deputy to Kaylee McEnany. She obviously was in the West Wing, saw what was happening that day. But Matthew Pottinger, just for people at home who don't aren't familiar with his name, he was the deputy national security advisor. It's a huge job inside the White House. He was one of the few people who resigned in protest that day because he saw what had happened. And he said it was very clear after Trump had attacked Pence that he, he couldn't work there anymore. And he was someone who had a very high ranking position, felt the need to resign over what happened. And so when he goes before the committee publicly, he is someone who was in the room for a lot of meetings, maybe not a lot of the legal meetings about what was happening with the effort to overturn the election. But what can he reveal to the committee about, you know, the inner workings of the West Wing on that day, given, of course, his his key role? The National Security Council, as you know, Caitlin, is the body that oversees all of the intelligence and largely all of the foreign policy uh, within the White House. 
and the deputy national security advisor is the one who everything runs through the deputy going up to the president. So I would suspect that Pottinger would know about what the intelligence was, about the expectations for what was going to occur on January 6th. He will be able to say what Donald Trump in, received in briefings from the national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, that Pottinger probably was in the room for. And he will be able to say what it, communications occurred uh, within the executive branch, which would include the Department of Defense or the Department of Justice or any of the intelligence community, the 17 agencies that include the intelligence community. So he will have a lot of information uh, that day. And when you pair it with Sarah Matthews, who was probably present with Donald Trump for much of the day, uh, you're, we're likely to get a much clearer picture of what Donald Trump was doing that day. I would add that there is a witness that Donald Trump called. We don't know the identity of that witness, but it is someone that Liz Cheney said has not yet appeared. Um, and it is someone we understand who worked in the White House who Donald Trump did not have a significant relationship with. Uh, I will be very interested to hear whether one of these witnesses received that call. I would suspect that that is the case. CNN has been told our reporting is a staff, a support staff member before, but we'll see. Uh, Daniel Goldman, thank you so much for your help in understanding all this. Thanks, John. Thanks, Caitlin. Uh, Ellie, let's talk about this uh, Matthew Pottinger. Sources are telling CNN that Matthew Pottinger, a former Trump National Security Council official, will now testify publicly in Thursday's primetime hearing alongside the former Trump White House aide, Sarah Matthews. This is why Pottinger says he left the Trump White House. Here it is. One of my staff brought me a printout uh, of a uh, tweet uh, by the president. And the tweet uh, said something to the effect that uh, Mike Pence, the vice president, didn't have the courage um, to, uh, to, to do what he what should have been done. Um, I uh, I read that tweet uh, and uh, made a decision at that moment to resign. Uh, that's where I knew that I was leaving that day uh, once I read that tweet. Sarah Matthews also testified that she felt Trump was pouring gasoline on the fire with that tweet. I mean, that was during the 187 minutes the committee will be focusing on. What gaps will these witnesses, you think, in your estimation, Ellie, be able to fill about that critical time period? Well, there's still enormous gaps, Tom. We do have little indicators here and there. The 224 tweet that prompted Pottinger's resignation, I think, is a key indicator. But that's an awful lot of time that needs to be filled in. We're never going to get a complete picture of what Donald Trump was doing unless Mark Meadows were to flip, for example. But that seems unlikely. But as an investigator, as a prosecutor, you have to do the best with what you can. And I think between the testimony of Cassidy Hutchinson, which filled in some of those blanks, Sarah Matthews, Matthew Pottinger, we're going to start to get a better sense of what Donald Trump was doing and not doing, and also what was his reaction to what he was watching. And I think the vast majority of the people in this country were horrified at what we were seeing, but we've seen some indications. For example, Stephanie Grisham said a few months mm -hmm. back on New Day that she saw Donald Trump, who was gleeful at what he was watching. So we're going to have to fill in the blanks. We're not necessarily going to get, I know the committee keeps saying minute by minute. They're not going to literally be able to give us minute by minute, but I think they can do quite a bit to fill in that three hour and seven minute gap. I mean, the first time, so go well, on. Well, I ju just, you know, one of the things I certainly feel like I've learned in this hearing is just how important this 224 tweet, tweet was. I mean, think about what was going on yeah. at that moment. At the, at the, the, the Capitol is under attack at that moment. I mean, the, the assault has begun. And what does the president do? He says um, he, he attacks M Mike Pence. Mm -hmm. And we have seen video of the, the rioters reading the tweet out loud and saying, look, the president is with us. He is, you know, that's when the hang Mike Pence stuff starts. I mean, it is just um, so important to learn the context of why he tweeted that statement at that time. And the people around him may be able to, you know, explain that a little. Well, let's think about this. I mean, it's just, I mean, any person, any boss, any leader, you see rioters going into the Capitol with Trump hats on, right? Wouldn't you, the first thing you do is get in front of a camera and say, stop it, this is not what we're about? Isn't that what, I mean, 
<laughs> and, 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 you it's, know, it's, it's, 187 minutes, that's a long time. Yeah. You know, it, it, it sounds shorter. I mean, as, as Ellie just said, it's three hours and seven minutes. He had a long time, and he had access to cameras. You can just go to the briefing room. Just walk over to the briefing room and say, look, say, guys, stop it. This is not what America's about. Maybe the reason why is he didn't want them to stop. I know that. That's what I'm saying. It's, I mean, it's <laughs> people are sitting there saying, well, what do, you, what do you expect? I've heard people say, what do you expect him to do? Expect him to be the president and, and go and say stop it, not take 187 minutes.